So, so when you step on fluoro, two questions arise, and one is where's the septum, and the other one is where's the left atrial appendage. And for those doing these procedures, it's pretty straightforward, but for those who are learning it, it's not so clear yet. So what is the echo navigator? It uh, basically finds the position of the TE probe on fluoro and recognizes where the TE probe is whenever you step on the pedal, and it also determines the direction of the TE probe on fluoro, so it can correlate the images obtained by fluoro mm -hmm. and echo, and based on that information, the echo navigator shows where the image, uh, echo image is uh, located in X-ray. And here you can see an example, basically soft tissue landmarks can be marked in echo, and those marks will automatically appear in the X-ray for guidance, and these marks then stay in the three-dimensional space, regardless whether you move the table of the patient or whether you remove or change the position of the image intensifier, these marks always stays in the three-dimensional space. So what can you do with this? You can see soft tissue in some, some way on the X-ray screen as marks only, so you don't see the structure, but you, you see these marks. And this allows you to look on one screen only instead of two screens during the procedure. So what are the limitations of that? These marks may not be in the correct position anymore if the patient moves in relation to the X-ray table and also if the structure, the soft tissue structure, has been, uh, is moving during the procedure, for example, uh, due to breathing and so on. So this shows you an example, transeptal puncture. So there are marks made on the echo screen where you want to puncture the interatrial septum, and this mark then appears on the uh, fluoral screen and uh, guides you during the procedure. So at this point, the transeptal needle is, needle is pulled down towards the blue marker, and then at this time, the transeptal needle is at the level of the blue mark. But note, you can see here that the soft tissue has moved because the needle is uh, punching the septum towards the left atrium. That means the mark is not anymore at the original space. And you can see this on echo and on floor. So this is one of the limitations. If the soft structure is moving during the, or changing the position during the procedure, then the marks are obviously not reliable anymore. So the transeptal needle is now across the septum, and for some reason we had, re had to remark the septum here, so it's green now. So this is the uh, site where you have punctured the interatrial septum, and then there had been placed two marks at the left atrial appendage. This is the pulmonary vein ridge, and this is the circumflex, which helps you then in some way to find the uh, left atrial appendage. Oops. So uh, when you look now at the left atrial appendage, here is a yellow mark placed at the pulmonary ridge, and um, you can see now here on fluoro this yellow mark, and you know that with your uh, pigtail catheter or whatever catheter you, you want to use to engage the appendage, you have to be below this uh, yellow mark here. So this is the pigtail now in the left atrial appendage, below the yellow mark, because that's the pulmonary vein ridge. And here is the, uh, again, this is the mark for the pulmonary vein ridge. This is the mark for the circumflex artery and the pigtail catheters in between. So you can see on screen before you give contrast that you are in the left atrial appendage. So we also use this, by the way, for, for our technique to shape the catheter during deployment of the devices. You can see the original configuration of the catheter. The catheter is now placed outside uh, on the chest of the patient. You can see the marker, which was the transeptal puncture. You can see the pulmonary ridge. You can see the pigtail catheter. And you see that the configuration of this sheath for this particular anatomy is not optimal. So what we then do, we change the configuration of the sheath. And now you see we are here at at the level of the interatrial septum, and now you can see that the uh, sheath has a better position in orientation to the uh, left atrial appendage. So then the sheath is inserted. Again, we have these markers here. We know that we are still in a good position in the left atrial appendage. And during device deployment, we have marked here the pulmonary ridge, and here again the circumflex. And because patient is breathing, heart is beating, you can see that these markers are not absolutely accurate. So they may change depending upon systole and diastole and uh, breathing. And we made also some marks here at the uh, insertion of the delivery cable to the device just to uh, check the accuracy of the uh, system and the device. 
And finally, the position of the occluder. You can see that we marked the edges of the um, uh, umbrella of the, append of the LAA occluder. This is a mark at the mitral valve, and you can see now here that this corresponds to the echo images. So in conclusion, uh, the echo navigator is the first step towards echo fluoro overlay. In its current version, it allows to mark soft tissue on the fluoro screen. The mark stays in the three-dimensional space even if the image intensifier is moved or rotated or zoomed in or zoomed out. And this technology may be helpful, especially for training in structural interventions. The major limitation is that the mark on the fluoro screen is static and does not move with the soft tissue. Thank you very much for your attention.